Hey everyone, my name is Keely and I am the owner and creator here at Soy and Shea and thank you so much for joining me for another soap making video. Now today I'm going to be doing another column pour soap. The last time I did this I said I wanted to have another go but with a different shape. The other day I was messing around on Amazon and I came across a suggestion on there of something I may like to have a look at and it was for a column pour mould. I thought why not let's order it in I wasn't holding out much hope for it but when I got it in I was pleasantly surprised and really really keen to actually use this one what I got in was a star shaped mold and it's not very long it is actually big enough to go into my mold and it sits in there really well the thing I was most impressed about with this because it wasn't actually in the description is that this is made of stone so it's nice and heavy which means it doesn't displace as you're pouring um, the soap in and it you know if you use some things that they kind of float and just mess up the pattern so I was really really impressed with this one that it was a very solid piece of stone very well made and I thought let's give it a go so let's go and see what happens on a column pour when we use a star shape let's go okay so I'm going to do this soap a little bit differently to how I usually do because I want to have plenty of working time for my pour so I thought I was going to do as I see a lot of people do and I'm going to whisk in my oil and lye solution and then I'll pour out my colors and I will use the stick blender very last to incorporate the color fragrance and everything together at the end so what I'm going to start off by doing is pouring in my lye water solution into my oils this is going to get very full but I know that the bucket is the right size so we get that empty pop that off to one side and I am just going to give that a stir with the whisk and this is a silicon whisk that I am using and I'm going to stir that until it all comes together and then we'll split it out for our colors actually have a few bits of shea butter which seem to have re-solidified as I left this sit overnight we've been having some beautiful warm days in fact they reckon we're going to get up to about 35 next week which I'm a little bit skeptical about but you know it could happen but last night actually dropped down to 12 degrees after we'd had about 29 during the day so it was quite a cool night and it looks like some of that shea butter re-solidified in clumps because I know it was all melted when I put this together but that's okay once I get the um, stick blender in there at the end that will melt down and it will all be fine I'm going to split it out for the colors and in this one I have some rainbow lilac white mica which I got from Aussie soap supplies so I'm going to pour off that much to start with I'm actually going to separate this whole bucket out but I'm going to try and keep my colors as even as I can so we'll start with that for now into this jug I have my favorite extravagance mica so we're going to pour some of that one off trying to keep them as even as I possibly can to start with and next jug I have got some black pearl mica which I have also added in just a little bit of activated charcoal as well just to give it that really nice dark look but I still want that sort of grayish tinge that the black micas tend to leave in this pot here I'm actually trying out a new mica it's this electric blue synthetic mica from heirloom body um, care it's a lighter one it's meant to be a synthetic so it should sparkle I really like the color of it but I wanted a navy blue so I was hoping that by mixing that blue with some black pearl we would get a nice navy blue color so hopefully that will stick in the final so um, soap and then into this final jug here I have some berry bliss mica which is from bath bomb world and I have mixed that again with some black pearl what I'm now going to do is finish separating out this bucket here and hopefully I won't have any left over but we'll see if I've got any left over I'll think of something else to do with it 
Okay, so I have my bucket all scraped out and what I'm going to do is just start by mixing these colours in. I don't think that white mica that I got, this rainbow lilac that I got from Aussie Candles really is a very good mica. It never really gives the colour. It gives a sort of pearlescent colour to it so it's a sheen in the soap but it doesn't actually colour so what I'm going to do is add in some titanium dioxide that will need to be blended to get that colour to really mix but for now I'll just give that another quick stir with the whisk. I'm going to get all these uh, mixed in with the whisk then I'm going to add in the fragrance. mixed in and it's now time to add in the fragrance. I have black pearlescent type which I got in from the fragrance shed. I've been having a bit of a look around and I think it is the same as black pearl from off the Nurture Soap website. It has exactly the same notes and everything in it and uh, it says it doesn't discolor, it says it doesn't accelerate so I'm really hoping that is true. Just grab my notes here. It says it's got notes of lavender, chamomile, myrrh, I hope I say this one right, olibanum, and black currant. Um, so to me, it's quite a, a relaxing nighttime fragrance. The best way that I can possibly explain this to you, if you're not very good at picking up what certain smells would be from the description, is if you've ever smelt the um, the bedtime baby from nature's garden this is like a darker more mysterious version of that one it really is quite nice and relaxing it's got not quite as sweet as bedtime baby but it does have those same sort of notes but i think that myrrh and that olibanum whatever that might be it's another sort of resin really give it a darker more mysterious sort of smell what i'm going to do is give these a very quick blitz with the stick blender and then we will get to pouring Let's get to pouring this one. I have got my slab mold here and I have got that little column piece here to go straight in the middle. I'm really excited to see what this actually does. Now I wish I could leave you some links um, to this one but unfortunately when I ordered it there was only one and I keep going back and I've been checking and they haven't had any more in so I really don't know and like when I've been and had a look at the actual seller they don't have any others in there so I don't know <laughs> why they only had this one or if they were just selling out because it didn't sell I really don't know but I thought I'm going to give it a go and see what we end up in here because the last time I did a column pour I said that I wanted to try this technique but using um using a different centerpiece and I'm really loving how that is coming out. I can see that this white actually needs a little bit more of a stir. I'm sorry I'm off camera there but that um, slab mold really does take up a fair bit of space. But I can see that the fragrance wasn't quite mixed. That is better. Alright, I'm hoping that that navy blue will stay navy. It's one of those sort of elusive colours to try and achieve. None of our mica suppliers here actually have a navy blue as a part of their, their mix. So I have tried mixing black in with the blueberry mica that my micro obsession does because that's you know quite a dark coloured blue but it just didn't come up navy at all so I'm really quite impressed that the black and that new blue that I got from Heirloom Body Care has come up this navy colour. So all I'm going to keep doing is alternating between these colours and pouring them in until we are almost full and then I will take that column out of it. watching the last few you'll probably um, notice that I am talking more about Amazon 
Australia than I have ever done so before. When they first released uh, or launched Amazon here in Australia, they did it very wrong and it put off a lot of Australian buyers. Um, it basically got filled up with the same um, sellers that were on eBay and, you know, that same sort of, you didn't know when you were going to get anything. It was the same cheap sort of unreliable stuff that fell apart the minute you got it. But in the last sort of, I don't know, maybe six to 12 months, they've really picked up their game on Amazon and it's become a little bit more like when um, you guys are using it over in America. And, you know, I can order stuff and it comes in from America half the time quicker than what Australia Post can get stuff delivered around Australia. I've had, generally if I've ordered stuff and it's coming in from America, it takes about a week to get it um, here to Australia from them. Um, I can send something from Brisbane to Perth, so one side of Australia to the other, and it takes a week. So I have quite literally had things from America quicker than what I've had stuff sent to me from within Australia. But I have been using it more and more and more. So for all of you guys that um, are watching and you from Australia, give Amazon a go. Everything that I've ordered from off there has been great quality. It's been shipped really quickly. In fact, I ordered something for shipping the other day. Um, I ordered it on one day and I got it two days later because uh, it was an Australian seller. I also bought a gin making kit and I ordered it on, uh, it must have been a Monday or a Tuesday, and I actually got it the next day. Admittedly, it was only coming from a suburb like that we could literally drive to in you know a couple of hours, but it did actually come the next day. So I was super duper impressed with it. We are down to the last bits. This is going to be a long wait until I can cut this one. I am loving the colours together. I am loving the pattern that it's done. Really, really hoping that that pattern has come through on the inside as well. Must have not been as generous with the black when I was pouring that. Got a fair bit of that one left. Let's get this purple out as well. Now before I completely empty the containers, I'm going to take the star out of the middle. I'm just going to knock off a lot of that excess off the edges. And this little star, it's pretty sturdy as you see, and that has not moved as I'm pouring it. I was so impressed. I was expecting to get this really flimsy thing come in and I was so impressed to see that it was made of stone. So I thought, well, that's definitely going to hold as we do our soap pouring. Most of that's got like black on it so I'm going to just clean that off into my black pot so I don't waste too much of it. This should be nice and easy to clean as well once it's saponified. What I'm now going to do is just go through and I will scrape out all of these buckets into the center but to do that I'm actually going to get rid of those spatulas and I'm going to get one that does a better job at scraping. All right so it's going to be a long 24 hours of leaving this one sit here to do its thing but we've got to be patient. I am going to give this one a spritz with some rubbing alcohol and I'll do so over the next sort of couple of hours every half hour come and give it another spritz just to try and hold back any of that soda ash and to hopefully get these colours to really pop in here. I'm going to go and leave this in my little um, resting area and we will come back in about 24 hours time and we'll see what using that star pouring mould actually does for this soap. Okay, so our black pearlescent soap is now ready to cut. I am loving how these colours have popped on there and I'm interested to see how dark that sort of navy blue colour is on the inside. The first thing I am going to do is split this one up into some logs, then we'll split it up on the single bar cutter. I 
am really really pleased with how that one is looking so far it's going to be really interesting to get this one cut open all right guys I'm really really sorry I thought I'd hit record and I obviously didn't push the button hard enough I've taken the logs that I would that I just split up and I've cut them into some squarish style blocks which I will then rotate and will cut them into the bars of soap if I were to cut these um, as a regular sort of soap where I just get them onto the um, onto the multi bar cutter I would end up with pretty much straight sort of lines through them but by cutting them this way we should get some really interesting shapes so I'm just going to get this one measured up so that we can get the correct size bars cut so let's start cutting these into individual bars we're going to start with one of the logs that have come off the end and we're going to go down and through and this is one of those bars. So you can see instead of it going straight across, this one is going at diagonals. I love using this pour because each and every one of these soaps is going to have a very different look to it, especially once we get into some of those um, center um, blocks. So there's a couple more. I'm loving that color combination. It's come up so good. You can see where the edges of the star were and how it's actually created this sort of drag line effect. So those ones are all going diagonal. Let's try one of these blocks that were from the middle loaf. This isn't quite the middle of the soap. I want to save that one till last because I know the last time I cut the middle um, the middle block there were some amazing cuts in there so let's get these ones done and see what we've got oh wow that one goes in that sort of standard up and down but I really love that must be um, where a majority of the soap was coming off the star and it's made that really nice sort of pattern up the top let's get this next one cut and through we go and that is that one and I love how the pattern just flows all the way through that bar of soap it is smelling really nice as well it's quite a gentle smell so this is going to be a really nice nighttime style of bar or style bar to use um, this one, because it's near the center, my center piece is a little bit more raised. So I'm actually going to pop it back through the cutter just to even that bar out. Oop, pull that off. And that. So that's the end of the center bar. You can really see where the star points have sort of influenced where that soap flows along what I will do because I'm not going to cut all of this soap um, on camera what I will do is grab that center block because that is the one I'm dying to see what it looks like in the middle so let's get that lined up and we'll cut the first one let's have it. oh wow that looks like a back of a tortoise or something just those sort of big spots that you get I really like how that one's come up and you can really see that star you can see how it starts off tiny and just builds and builds and builds that is an amazing cut out of that one so I can't wait to see what these next two look like so let's get that cleaned off so we don't drag any of that old soap through and we will cut through and have a look at what these two pieces have and wow I really really like how that has come together but I think out of those three pieces this one would have to be my favorite out of them I love how the gold is sparkling in these two and that purple is the most prominent color the black is the brightest color in this one but I really love how that star has um, formed in the middle of this soap it's just so pretty I love doing this pour I'm really really um, pleased that I found that um, star shape to do this with um, I'm going to keep putting into Amazon and into Google searches 
um, looking for a column pour mold because maybe I can find some other shapes as well. For the top of this is the very top of where the pour was, so where I actually finished it. So you've got that sort of circular look, but then you've got that really interesting side on this side of soap as well. I just love how each and every one of these soaps is so completely different and has interest on all all the sides. It's just just amazes me. <laughs> I love working with soap if you haven't already guessed that one. So, all right so I'm going to keep cutting these bars of soap. I will then let them sit for a day or so before tidying them up and popping them onto the curing rack. If you follow along with me on Instagram I'll post pictures of these when they are ready to go onto the website and available at markets. I hope you have enjoyed watching me make this column pour soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And until the next video, I hope you have a great one and I'll see you then. Bye.